Welcome to CEO Interviews, a production of Gorecom, where we take the time to speak with small cap executives about recent important developments at their companies. With us today, I'm ecstatic to have, for the first time ever, Dr. Francis Dubay. He's chairman and co-CEO at Zenyatta Ventures, soon to be Zen Graphene Solutions. The company trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the stock symbol ZEN. First thing you show about the company is it's in the middle of a massive corporate and marketing makeover. Leading that transformation is Dr. Francis Dubay, who's co-CEO, director, and head of business development technology. Happy to say he's also a graduate from Agoracom to the C-suite. We'll talk about that. Along with him in the transformation, Don Bubar, who's also co-CEO and director, who's got a long and distinguished track record in the junior resources space and a successful history with Agoracom from way back in the day when he actually graduated from the TSX to the New York Stock Exchange and the $10 share price. No, for those of you who are new to the story, because you've got a lot of Zenyatta fans in Agoracom, we've got a lot of people who don't know about Zen, uh, the company has discovered the largest and very rare ultra-high purity graphene depo graphite deposit in Northern Ontario that's called the Albany Graphite Deposit. Uh, its deposit allows for easy conversion of graphene using a variety of simple mechanical and chemical methods, and the company is, uh, is planning to capitalize on the burgeoning graphene applications market. Here to talk about it is Francis. Welcome to the show. Thank you, George. Very happy to be here with you. Buddy, I got to tell you, I'm ecstatic because I want to congratulate you. This first time we're doing an interview uh, since your uh, ascension into uh, into the C-suite. But, you know, you're a prominent member on Agoracom, a very well-respected investor, great insight into so many things. And now you've moved on to uh, the C-suite and you're heading up and you're heading up Zen Graphene Solutions with Don Bubar. How does it feel to make that kind of transition? You know what? It's, it's been a very great transition. We've got such a great team around us, uh, from the board directors to management to the market develop te development team. It's just been a really wonderful opportunity to you know, take what I learned from uh, being a simple investor over the, over the years with you guys on Agoracom and transitioning to now being able to be involved at this level with this potential of this company. It's truly an amazing experience. Now, more than just titles, you're already on the move. Uh, as most people can probably tell, you're not talking to us from a typical uh, office. You're in a hotel, you're most likely you're in a hotel lobby. You're actually at the Graphene Expo in Austin. You guys are on the move. Why are you there? What are you looking to accomplish? Yeah, we're actually talking to you from the AT&T Conference Center. The uh, Graphene uh, world has come, in, come down here to meet. Um, there's a lot of uh, the top people in the graphene industry are all here. We've gotten a chance to meet with, you know, the, the uh, James Baker from the Geek at Manchester University. Uh, Haydal is here. Versarian is here. Um, a lot of, you know, investors looking at this space are here. So it's been a wonderful experience to meet all these people here. Uh, fair to say that a lot of these people hadn't heard of Zen, Zenyatta, Zen Graphene Solutions yet. And you're already uh, appealing to a broader market of both industry people and investors? Absolutely. There was very little history uh, of Zen with these people. So it's, it's great to basically make introductions and present uh, our company. And we've had a great uh, string of news releases. We've had three news releases in the last three days, all very strong news releases. So it's permitted us to really put uh, Zenyatta in a very good light here in front of everybody. Well, let's talk about, let's talk about those news releases. And, and you're right, they're powerful press releases. So Again, just showing me that you guys are on the move already in, in this transition for Zenyatta, uh, soon to be Zen Graphene Solutions. Tell us about the announcement yesterday with the German Aerospace Agency, because that seemed to be incredibly big, given the fact that uh, the agency has been given the responsibility for planning and implementation of the German space program. It's got 800 employees in 20 locations in Germany and around the world. How important, what, what was the purpose of that? of that press release and how important is that to the audience? Well, you know, any space program, you know, is always on the cutting edge of engineering development. And, you know, we're very proud that they want to get into the graphene space and see what graphene can do for multiple applications that they're looking at. Um, they have a partnership with University of British Columbia and here in Canada. They really like the entrepreneurial spirit that we have in Canada. And so I've chosen to work with uh, one of our leading universities here. And we have been working with uh, University of British Columbia already at the Okanagan campus. 
And so we were introduced to them uh, through uh, Dr. Bickler out, out there. And uh, they really liked what we could bring to the table. And uh, so we're working on a, a few different applications with them uh, right now. I love the application uh, with respect to jet fuel uh, and fuel. What are you guys doing there? Because I didn't realize there could be an application there. Well, jet fuel is something that's uh, very interesting. First of all, we can improve the uh, performance of jet fuel by about 7.5%, uh, increasing the power, increasing the efficiency. But because we're creating a cleaner burn, we actually are uh, helping the environment as well. Um, graphene oxide actually is 40% oxygen, 60% carbon. So whenever you add oxygen to a fire, um, you know, you're, you're, you're feeding it. So we're creating a more complete burn, a cleaner burn. Uh, so it's great for the environment, it's great for the power, and it's great for the efficiency of the uh, engines as well. So it works on multiple aspects of it. Yeah, and given how expensive it is to, uh, you know, to use jet fuel and the amount of jet fuel and this kind of rocket fuel is going to be used in the coming years with everybody going into space, this could potentially be a huge market going forward because everyone's racing into space, not just national uh, aerospace companies uh, anymore. You also had great news with respect to Tokyo Tech Research there where the researchers concluded, I found this interesting and I'm gonna read here a bit of it uh, because it's so technical. They concluded that due to the size of its flakes, the exfoliation productivity of graphite derived from your Albany deposit performed up to 1500% better than their reference flake gra graphite material. So how big, first of all, what does that mean exactly? And then how big, how big is that to be 1500% better and their reference materials to this point. It's, it's huge, George. I can, we can't minimize this. We've had terrific uh, results from multiple universities, from Israel, uh, England, Canada, USA. We always knew we had terrific material for graphene. We didn't understand why. And this paper uh, finally explained why we're getting those results. It's really you know, the Albany deposit is unique in the world. There is nothing like it. They actually wrote a geology paper on the genesis of the deposit because it is so unique. Um, and it's created a, a, uh, a graphite flake size, if you want. I hate the, the word flake size. It's, it's not a flake deposit. So, but the, the crystalline size are about 15 microns. When you compare that to a flake deposit, that's about a 2.5 millimeter average flake size. It's about a factor of a thousand fold in the difference in the flake size. And when you're trying to create graphene, the smaller the flake size, the better. You can try to process the flake size to crush it down into smaller pieces, but as this paper showed, there's a point that you can't push it further without damaging the flakes or getting agglomeration. So we really have a huge advantage there because of the unique nature of our large deposit. So really what, I got, what I got from reading this, and correct me if I'm wrong, is, um, this should be this should be something that gets discovered by the world at this point because it's independent research at the end of the day, and That's I got I got to presume there are a great number of influential people uh, in the graphite graphene space that are reading this for the first time and saying, "Who are these guys and how do I get in contact with them? Am I am I am I stretching that or is that way was that what should be happening out of this?" No, you, you're, you're pretty much bang on. We've had great discussions even just this morning with some of the people here, because again, a lot of them are here, but I've also had a lot of uh, reach out on LinkedIn and uh, by email uh, from people uh, literally around the world uh, about uh, our news releases in the last two days. So when we took over on May 11th, one of our strategic dates to reboot the company, if you will, was this event. We really wanted this event to be uh, a restart for the company. That's why we, we you know, prepared these news releases in, in time. Uh, we wanted to make an impression. We've got a new website that was launched yesterday. It is a temporary website, but it's a, a new website, a, a, lot, uh, you know, a lot more optimized. We can find it a lot easier if you're looking for us. Keywords, a lot easier to, to locate us with. Um, our full website will actually be launched in January, but we already have a much bigger presence on the net now than we had before. Let me, let me ask something, and this is something that will be answered by someone like you who's at a show and you actually talk to people face to face. The reaction that you're getting, so you're meeting great people in the industry, you're meeting great potential investors, so a lot of influencers. The reaction you're getting uh, from these people who are hearing about Zen for the first time and are taking a look at the Tokyo research and the German aerospace partnership, 
is the reaction as expected, better than expected, blows you away? You know, how, how well accepted have you guys been at this conference? Well, the one thing we did yesterday is they had a vetted audience. Uh, people had to pay $1,000 to attend this event just to, just to be able to attend and look at um, investor pitches, if you will. So we presented there for about 25 minutes yesterday, presented the company, the opportunity in front of us, and it was very well received. We had a few people after the uh, presentation basically follow us out of the room and, and engage with us and had some really in-depth discussions. So. Um, there's some very good potential that'll come from uh, this meeting for us, for sure. I'm gonna play devil's advocate for a second. The one knock against graphene has been that for years, we've all known it's the wonder material, but it doesn't seem like it's really panned out from a commercial point of view. Uh, so, and commercialization, obviously, at the end of the day, is what you need to get to. Uh, does, the, does the news out of Ford Motors yesterday, where they announced that two of their vehicles are gonna be using graphene by the end of this year, uh, does that mark the beginning of commercialization where graphene now is going to really start to go? I know there have been smaller applications, but where it's really going to be hitting the mainstream, or are we still too early? No, I, you're absolutely right. We, we've had a smaller applications before come out. Uh, there's some applications here that, are, that have been presented that are really fantastic. But when you get companies like Ford Motors uh, announcing that they're going to put that in two of their vehicles, and... To be honest with you, we're working with one of the uh, large car manufacturers directly right now. We're also working with two EOMs uh, directly as well. We were looking at, uh, you know, at least four different applications with these companies. None of them were for sound reduction, which is the application that Ford came out with. Uh, they actually embedded less than 0.5% graphene into their foam, insulating form, foam, and, you know, got great results from that. So when you start seeing these high level companies start using graphene, it's very exciting. It, it tells me that when we start ramping this up, the volume uh, or, or the demand for graphene is gonna go up quickly. But to go back to why we haven't had any results for the last you know, five, six years where we've heard of graphene so much, there was a report just yesterday of, uh, actually it was a Friday report, on how 60 companies were tested for their graphene, 60 companies that say they're producing graphene, not one of them had pure graphene. The best they could get was about a 50% graphene rate. So there's a lot of product that is being labeled as graphene that is not graphene. Yeah. And that is really tainting the waters out there. And it's, it makes it harder for companies like Zenyatta who has a really high-end graphene to differentiate ourselves. But that's why we're out here rebranding, remarketing, and relaunching the company basically. All right, so it sounds like you're on the move. Uh, you've got some great potential applications. Research has proven what you've got. Uh, so it seems like you and Don Bubar have done a great job in this transformation. Uh, what your job isn't done yet, obviously, because like I said, you guys just took over the reins on May 11th. What other steps should shareholders look forward to in terms of this transformation uh, and remaining changes that you think uh, are, are gonna come into the company? Well, I think for us, the big thing is, is the bulk sample coming up. The bulk sample will be a proof of concept. Um, so we've applied for that bulk permit uh, in June. We don't have it yet, but we've had some good discussions and, and you know, we do expect that bulk permit soon. The idea would be to go in on a winter road. Winter road will be built in, in December and we'll actually extract the bulk sample from January to March during the winter season and much easier up there uh, to operate in the winter time. Uh, so we'll have, you know, up to uh, 990 tons of ore, uh, which should lead to about 40 tons of uh, high purity graphite. Um, you know, we expect to finish that processing probably in July, August. So by September 1st, we could actually be sitting on a lot of material ready to process into graphene and become a player in the graphene space, uh, basically ready to have products for sale. Uh, in the fourth quarter next year. So in a year from now, we actually could start seeing cash flow and that's very exciting. That's the most exciting thing I've heard actually, because you know, I've been following Zenyatta for a long time. It's been a very, very strong forum on Agoracom. It always seems like every year we are waiting for something to happen, wait, this can be the year and it never really transpired. But uh, to hear that you're a year away from potential commercialization and I'm presuming Again, I'm reading between the lines, tell, tell me if I'm off base, but I'm presuming in between now and then, you're gonna be reaching out to more and more potential partners for actual commercial applications in order to take the product. 
we're getting requests almost daily right now. Uh, our biggest issue is we have very little material now to give out as samples. So we have to be really choosy on who we work with, uh, but it's a great you know, situation to be in. Um, UBC alone has opened many, many doors uh, for us, a lot of corporate entities. Um, they've got a lot of expertise out there. Um, but again, we, we've had great uh, results as well from McMaster uh, that we've just signed on with, uh, Western, Waterloo, Guelph University of Adoption has been fantastic for us, U of T. So the amount of brilliant people around us, uh, you know, uh, helping um, develop applications for us is, is tremendous. So I think that's a part of the coming that people don't get is we have terrific um, partners on the research side, both on the university side and on the end user side. So we get, so our partnership with DLR, the uh, German Aerospace Agency, is a three-way NDA basically between us, them, and the uh, University of British Columbia. That model is something we've done all as well uh, with other industry partners, uh, including uh, the car manufacturing that we can't name because of the NDA. But um, you know they're looking at multiple applications, and we're bringing in the talent on the university side to help develop those applications. So it's a great three-way partnerships between us, the university people, and the end users. Yep, and it looks like you know you're putting your money where your mouth is because uh, great things have been happening, especially over the past couple of months and I want to thank you. Look, you're, you're at this Austin, you know, expo, the Scrappy and Expo. You took the time to, to talk to your shareholders and new potential shareholders from there. So that, that speaks volumes about how you're making accessible and how you want to make sure you open up the lines of communication. So congrats. Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. And congratulations to you and to Don, you know, it's uh, for me personally, great to see two friends of mine, two industry people combined forces, and best of all, to see you guys already moving the company forward. So we'll end it there because I'm sure we could keep talking about Zenyatta for a while, but I'm sure we're going to have you back on. Sounds like a lot more, uh, a lot more in the very near future based on what's going on. Sounds great. You, I, I just want to address quickly, you talked about our shareholders. We wouldn't be here without our shareholders. We know we you know, won a hard uh, proxy battle because of our shareholders. Uh, you know, I personally call the top 150 shareholders on the list when we launched that proxy battle. We're in communication with our shareholders. We love our shareholders. And uh, I know it's been a long road, but, you know, please be patient. There's a lot of great things coming, guys. And Thank on you. that note, and on that note for all the shareholders, uh, you know, uh, the Zenyatta Hub on the Corecom, soon to be Zen Graphene Solutions, is going to be a CEO verified one. So you'll be able to ask questions. And you'll be able to get answers from Francis, Don, and anybody else they nominate from the company, but you'll actually know it. You'll see the check mark there beside the profile, and you know that you're talking to them. So take advantage of that, because we know you're going to have a lot of questions. We know there's a lot going on, but the good thing is they're good questions. They're not the regressive kind of questions. Things are moving forward. So take advantage, ask those questions, and open up the lines of communication. Thanks for joining us, Francis. Congratulations again. And to everyone at home, you've been watching Dr. Francis Dubé. He's chairman and co-CEO at uh, Zenyatta Ventures, soon to be Zen Graphene Solutions. The company trades on the TSX Venture Exchange on the stock symbol ZEN. Get to that hub, do your due diligence, communicate with the company and watch these guys go uh, because I know both of them personally and I have a high degree of confidence that 12 months from now, this company is gonna be in a much better position than it is today. Thanks for joining us everyone. Francis, thank you. Con continued success at that expo, bring it home. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Have a great day, George.